A few weeks ago, I uploaded a poll on this channel asking which editing style breakdown you wanted to see. And today, with over 50% of the votes and plenty of comments, the winner is Isaac's style. So now it's time to break down Isaac's editing style using only CapCut. So, in Isaac's videos, he uses a ton of techniques. Smooth transitions, character animations, realistic voiceovers, perfect music, motion graphics, sound effects, fast cuts, b-rolls. Yeah, there's a lot going on. But here's the good news. We can do all of this in CapCut. But CapCut doesn't have 3D camera movements. Hmm, yeah, true. But we have keyframes. It's not impossible. You know what Alexander once said? There is nothing impossible to him who will try. So let's find out if that's true. I've broken down Isaac's best techniques into five core pillars. And the first one, character animation. I've already made a video covering the basics, like how to create a character and animate it smoothly. But now I'm going to show you how to create those fast, energetic character movements, just like Isaac. First, I add a character PNG to the CapCut timeline. Adjust the clip size to match the video and place it on the left side of the screen. Next, I move to the one second mark and add a keyframe there. Then, I go back to the beginning of the clip, rotate the character about negative 13 degrees, scale it down slightly, and move it to the bottom left corner, just off screen. Now, I add two more keyframes at the 1.15 and 2 second marks. At the final keyframe, I position the character on the right side of the screen. Right click the clip and choose Show Variable Speed Animation. Start with the rotation graph. Enable Bezier handles for both keyframes and shape the curve like this for a smooth turn. Do the same for Y graph. Now adjust the X axis graph. For the first two keyframes, apply a similar curve. But for the next two, stretch the handles to create a harder curve. Once that's done, hide the variable speed animation view. Next, duplicate the clip by pressing Ctrl C and Ctrl V. Drag and drop a second character PNG onto the duplicate, then click Replace Clip. Now both characters will have identical movements. Right click the second layer and choose Create Compound Clip. Then open the X keyframe graph on the first layer and move the playhead to the curve's shift point. Without moving the playhead, right click the clip and choose Create Compound Clip. Now click this button to split the right side of the first clip. Then select second layer and click this button for split left side of the clip. Now place both characters are on one layer. Create compound clips for both. And finally, add motion blur for a smooth finish. The second technique is text animation. Let's start with a pop-up animation. First, I add a light background to the timeline for text stands out clearly. Then, I add a text layer and type in the text. For fonts similar to Isaac's style, I recommend Starry or Rubik. I'll go with Starry. Next, I apply a stroke of 40 and add a shadow with these settings for extra depth. Now it's time to animate. I add a keyframe at the beginning of the layer, then add two more at the 10 second frame and 15 second frames. At the first keyframe, I scale the text down to its minimum size. Then I right click on the clip and select show variable speed animations. In the scale graph, I create a curve like this. It gives the pop-up a satisfying bounce effect. You can now copy and paste this clip to create multiple pop-up texts at different times across your video. Next, let's look at creating longer captions or subtitles with just a few clicks. I begin by adding a voiceover to the timeline. Then go to the text tab, select auto captions, choose your language, and click generate. Within seconds, CapCut automatically creates captions that match the entire voiceover. Now, we customize them. Like before, select a clean font, add a stroke and shadow, and go to the animation tab. Under captions, pick a text animation that fits your style. I'm choosing spring. Here's how it looks. A few weeks ago, I uploaded a poll on this channel asking which editing style breakdown you wanted to see. And finally, let's recreate this random text animation that Isaac often uses. Just type your text, customize it with your style, and go to the animation section. Under the In tab, choose Random Text Writer. Adjust the duration, and that's it. Next, let's talk about how to create glowing elements, just like Isaac does in his edits. It's actually super easy. Start by placing one of these glow overlay videos onto your timeline, right above your main video. You can download all these overlays and assets from the Isaac Editing Asset Pack I've put together. The link is in the description. And yes, it's 100% free. Once the overlay is added, set the blend mode to screen. Now just split and position the glowing elements wherever they fit best, like on transitions or key moments. If downloading overlays feels like boring, don't worry. You can actually do this right inside CapCut. Just head to the sticker section and select the Vibes tab. You'll find a bunch of electric and glowing style elements here that look just like overlays. 
The fourth pillar is audio, and I've broken it down into three parts. Let's start with voice. If you're using an AI voiceover, the way you write your script matters a lot. Add punctuation marks to shape the tone. Use question marks for questions, quotation marks to highlight emphasis, and commas for natural pauses. This helps the voice sound more realistic and emotional. Next up, sound effects. I've included a popular SFX pack in the Isaac Asset pack. Clicks, typing, whooshes, camera shutters, and more. But if you're looking for something specific, CapCut's built-in SFX library has a lot to choose from. And finally, music. Start by browsing CapCut's music library. If you don't find the vibe you're looking for, go to YouTube and search by emotion or energy. It all comes down to creativity. Now let's move on to our final pillar, the flowchart. This is one of the most iconic techniques Isaac uses in his edits. So, let's recreate it. But before we start, quick heads up. CapCut might lag a little while doing this. Don't worry, it's not your device. It's just CapCut struggling with lots of compound clips because it can't generate gradient colors directly. So yeah, we'll be duplicating and compounding a lot. Back to the video. First, I add the main text right in the center of the screen. Pick a catchy font, adjust the scale, and add a slight shadow to make it sharp. Then, I drop in this background behind the text to help it stand out. Now I change the text color to cyan, Duplicate the layer and switch the second one to blue. Then, compound it and add a film strip mask to that layer. After that, select both text layers and create a compound clip. Now it's time for the bounce animation. Just like I explained before, add three keyframes, set the scale to minimum at the first keyframe, open the keyframe graph, and create curves like this. Next, place the brush stroke PNGs where they fit best, like this, and adjust their sizes to fit perfectly. After placing them, go to the Adjustment section, then the Curves tab, and adjust the blue curve like this to make it fully blue. Now right-click on the clip and create a compound clip. Duplicate it, go to the HSL tab, select the blue palette, set the hue to negative 100 and saturation to 100. Then go to the Mask tab, add a circle mask, place it at the start side of the brush stroke, set Feather to around 30, and click the Invert button. Now we have a smooth gradient. Repeat this for all brush stroke layers. Once done, let's animate them. Select one layer, add a split mask, rotate and move it until the brush stroke is hidden. Set feather to 25. Then, add a keyframe at the 12 frame mark, go forward about 15 frames, and move the mask to the other end of the brush stroke. Repeat this for all the brush stroke layers. Now for the keyframing, right-click on a layer and choose Show Variable Speed Animations. Then, click one of the keyframes and hit the Auto Curve button. Do this for all keyframes across all brush stroke layers. Once done, I shift the keyframe position slightly, so each layer starts and ends at different times and speeds. Now let's make the text boxes. First, we need a rectangle, but unfortunately, CapCut doesn't have a shape tool. Here's a trick. Add a new text layer, press the spacebar a few times, then go to background options, select the second background, and set the color to dark blue. Place it where you want and create the gradient the same way we did with others. Select the bottom text layer and create a compound clip. But if you don't want to spend time making gradients, I've included all of these in one asset pack. Next, I apply the same bounce animation we used on the main text. Then I duplicate the box and place it at all the text points. Now it's time to add the text. Just add a text layer, type what you want, pick a font, place it inside the text box, and add an in animation. I use type 2. Then, duplicate and repeat for all the text you need. Once the structure and animation are done, it's time to make it shine. I drag and drop the glow effect onto the main text layer, set glow to 20, and repeat that for the other layers. You can also place a glow effect on top of all the layers, but this way gives a more eye-catching result. For side text layers, I set the glow to 25 and size to 40. Finally, I add the play pendulum effect, set the strength to 10, twist to 0, speed to 20, and sharpen to 10. Alright, we just broke down five of the most iconic techniques Isaac uses in his edits. And guess what? 
These are just the basics. There's a whole world of pro-level techniques out there. Way more advanced stuff that takes your edits to the next level. So if you want to see those and learn how to make high-level animations just like Isaac, drop a comment and let me know you're ready for part two. That's it for now. See you in the next one.